You know, when this show popped up on Netflix, I thought to myself, I'm a huge fan of The Simpsons, and I'm a huge fan of Futurama, so I might as well check this out. And before I get started with this video, I want to give a quick shout out to one of my friends, Monson Vids. Monson Vids is a vlogger on YouTube. I've watched his content. He is really good. He's a very good friend of mine. I work with him. And if you like my stuff, I would personally recommend checking him out. That is Monson Vids. Please go check him out. And when you do, tell him Jake Allen sent you. Now, where was I? Oh, yeah. Disenchantment. So Disenchantment is a Netflix TV show created by the same creators that made The Simpsons and Futurama. And when I first saw the trailer for this, I thought to myself, this does look interesting. Because the trailer tells me of a princess named Princess Diabini who ran away from a wedding she didn't want to be a part of. And now she's off to explore herself and what her part of the world is. At least... At least that's what I thought the show was going to be about, when in reality, what I saw from the trailer was technically the first two episodes of the show. As for the rest of it, they spend most of their time at her home in Dreamland, the castle of Dreamland. Now, now if we're going to stay in one place for most of the show, how is Dreamland in particular? It's alright, for sure. I mean, some episodes were definitely filler, nothing really special about them. But there was enough content in the show to make me continue watching it. Like, like for example, Princess Tia Beanie herself, you could definitely tell that she is a spoof off of Princess uh, Queen Targaryen, Daenerys Targaryen from Game of Thrones, if I can get my words right. You can definitely tell she's a ripoff of her if she was a very heavy drinker. Yeah. Now, there's, there's one little problem when it comes to that. For three shows in particular, can you come up with another main character that is not a heavy drinker? I'm just saying. But anyway, Tia Beanie, or Bean as everyone likes to call her, is palled around is palled around by a little elf named Elfo, who ran away from Elfwood because it's just too much of a heavy place. He wants a life that has a little bit more misery in it. So, in other words, ending up in Dreamland was the perfect place for him. Because knowing Dreamland's not exactly a rich place, it's not exactly a fun place, but there is enough there to definitely grab your interest. Also, another one of her friends is a little demon named Lucy. It's, he's basically her personal demon, trying to turn her to the dark side and whatnot. And for the first part, you kind of tell that, you can kind of tell two people are looking into a fire, looking into a fire and watching the demon's progress of taking, taking Bean taken Bean to the dark side. So you can tell there's a little bit of mystery involved with Lucy, and that makes him a very interesting character. Whereas for Princess Bean and Elfo, that kind of falls a little bit flat. Why? Because, well, Bean wants to be a very happy person, and being a princess doesn't really make her happy, whereas Elfo wants to experience a more miserable life. But that's really the only character traits that we actually get in the very first part. And that was a little bit of a downer for me. That and also, when when I'm thinking of a fantasy world created by the same people that made Futurama, I have expected the show to be a little bit more creative. Just as creative as Futurama was. In every single episode, we would go to a new place. It's really different. They got very creative in their in their creations of new worlds and whatnot. I half expected that to be in Disenchantment, but you never really get that in the very first part. Except for a couple of scenes in particular. I mean, the Exorcist scene in the third episode, that was a very funny scene. And also the fifth episode in particular is probably my favorite episode of the entire first part. So there's a win right there. It's, it's an episode of Hansel and Gretel. What can I say? I like a different version of a story which is already a dark and twisted story. What can I say? I have my own pet peeves, and that's one of them. But there are also a couple of episodes that do definitely fall flat. I mean, Elfo pretending they had a girlfriend who is a giant na named Tess and everything. That episode was more a filler. I didn't really see any part of it being in the show. And also the party episode. That episode... Uh, that episode, I just thought to myself, you're just ripping off a of Game of Thrones with with this one. And when I mention Game of Thrones, you know exactly how this is going to go. But that episode also has another character named Chaz, so so it's not really a full it's not really a full downer. So what can I say about Disenchantment? It's not exactly the show I expected, but there's a lot of mystery and a lot of and a lot of 
what can I say? What can I say? There's a lot of mystery and a lot of small creativity, enough to keep you interested in the show. Because at the very end of the show, it's starting to pick up. They're starting to go to other places, and it, it ends on a cliffhanger, which all three parts of the show kind of kind of end on, ends on a cliffhanger, which is enough for you to continue watching it. So when it comes to when it comes to The Simpsons and Futurama, this one hits third place for me. I mean, first place would be Futurama, then it'd be The Simpsons, they're really close to each other. Disenchantment's a little bit down here. It's kind of a it's kind of a leap down for me personally. But there is enough to keep you interested. And if um you're a big fan of The Simpsons and you're a big fan of the of Futurama, this show is definitely worth streaming. So guys, the first part of Disenchantment, have you seen it? What did you think about it? Whatever you thought, comment below, and I'll see you in the next episode.